Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is Die in the Dungeon. It plays one to two players by Fundamental Games, takes about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And this is mainly a solo player game. Basically, you're going to choose a monster, you're going to move around fighting heroes in a dungeon, and attempting to fight the epic party at the end of the round. Now, each dungeon is set up in its own campaign structure, and there's multiple different dungeons you'll be setting up throughout the game. There is customization, and of course, the battles will take place with die rolling. You're going to be doing a lot of die rolling in this game and how it works is you'll be moving from one space to another you're going to be losing time and you're going to be spending stats or health when you take damage and rolling those specific die based on your attributes against the people that you're playing against or the heroes that you're playing against and if you're able to get through the entire dungeon and defeat the epic party before your time runs out or your hero hmm, hero right evil character runs out of health or uh, full, full stats basically you're going to win that specific dungeon and move on to the next dungeon in the game in the game die in the dungeon let's go take a look down below i'll show you what the game comes with and basically how to play to a certain extent and then we'll come up and discuss my review for the game here's die in the dungeon and mostly what's included in the game at least for this specific prototype now this is a prototype so do expect things to change as the campaign goes on they make changes or maybe stretch goals happen regardless though this is a very nice looking prototype and as you see there are four different villains you're gonna be playing as or boss bosses or baddies and you're going to basically choose one of them along with their set of cards and each of them have specific special abilities you can use once a game they're going to get a set of six different die all the different dies uh, you basically will see in a set of seven except for the tens die so you're going to get these four sided die the six the ten the eight the twelve and the twenty and when you start off place the twenty on the twenty side place the four sided die on the one side on each end here and then here you'll place the highest amount on each of the die in any order you want. So if you want, you could put a 10 over on this side. You could put the six here. You can put the eight here and the six here or the 12, right? You can mix and match these however you choose. Just make sure you have them on the highest side. And this would be on the one and this is on the 20. So these little die aside, you'll be using them as you defeat epic or heroes and basic heroes and whatnot. Also these cards as well, you'll be utilizing them. And you're also going to get one of these little guys here. This is a little die minion, which is a six sided to start with, but you'll get more as you go throughout the game. The game is also going to come with additional sets of die for when you upgrade your die and for when the enemies attack as well as when you attack and it's going to come with cards there's the epic party cards there's the basic hero cards that range from one to i be, believe level four and these can get pretty weirdly as you have more and more increase you're going to get a bunch of extra tiles that level from one two three and i believe even four start tiles your character pawn that you'll be placing on the start space and then of course this is your dungeon some extra tokens your dungeon guide and rule book now in the dungeon guide it will tell you a little bit of an explanation as to how to set up the dungeons they're fairly simple and they explain a pretty good amount as to what type of tiles are used how to place them down and how to place all the tokens on top of them and basically the rulebook will explain how the turn works but i'm just going to explain the very basic turn sequence what you need to do how they function and then we'll come up and talk about the game if you want a full in-depth idea of how to play the game i'm sure the kickstarter will have one for you but to begin with uh, on your turn, you'll start with by increasing your ability power by one, so the one will go to a two. This is used for playing your specific abilities on your character board, as well as playing your abilities on the cards here, and they have a specific number on the top left-hand corner that tells you how much they cost in order to utilize these. So spending this is going to give you magical powers, or you let, let, let you utilize your magical powers. Then you're going to uh, choose to rest if you want. You can spend up to three time, and time is this 20 here, which basically whenever you move, you're going to subtract one, and in addition, whenever you spend health, uh, spend to gain health, you can do up to three. So for instance, I have uh, 10 health here. Let's say I went down to seven, right? Well, my turn right now, I can actually spend three time, putting me at 17, to then increase my health to its maximum, which we go back to 10 here, which is pretty useful, right? But if the time ever runs out, you're going to lose. So you have to be very careful with how you spend your time. Additionally, if you don't want to do that, or if you did that, you can then go ahead and choose to lose a time to move your character to an adjacent unoccupied dungeon tile, and then flip it and attempt to complete it. In this case here, you can go to any of these four spaces here. So if I had went to here, 
I would then go ahead and flip this over. I would exhaust uh, myself by one time, putting 17 to 16, and then I will do whatever this says. Generally speaking, there's a level, there's something that happens or an ability or a requirement to meet, and then there's going to be baddies you'll fight. So it'll tell you a level one, and then it's going to say two archers at a level one, and those are the ones you're going to fight. So you would actually go ahead and take the two, or rogues I should say, and then you're going to place them next to your creature board, setting them like this, and then all their stats are cumulative. So in this case, you're going to have four might, you're going to have eight agility, and two magic. And each of the baddies are going to fight with something unique, whether it be magic, whether it be agility, or whether it be strength. And the way a fight's going to basically work is you're going to check to see how many warriors in the party, and they're just going to have specific bonuses to might for those guys. Rogues will get a certain amount of additional attacks and potentially even more bonus attacks based on how you roll. And then you're going to have things like clerics that can defend their party members from taking too much damage. So those can be very, very useful as well. But basically how it works is you'll roll their highest die value, which four and four is eight, so you'll roll an eight set of die, and you'll check yours, and you'll uh, you'll see if they, their roll beats yours, or if, the, if it's their highest roll, you'll take damage. And when you take damage, you'll lose it from either your health or the stat that you were rolling against. And then you will roll, choosing one of your stats to fight against theirs. And if you beat their stat, you'll remove one of them from the game up until the point where you remove all of them. When you defeat these little baddies here, you're going to gain these little tokens here. And if you beat two of them, you'll gain two. And eventually when you hit six here, you can start utilizing these pips in addition to your roll to substantially increase your damage, as well as, of course, your little die demon little minion guys here. And you can go ahead and roll an additional die in addition to whatever will die you're rolling based on your mat here to increase your damage that you are dealing throughout the game. Now, if the tile also had a token on it, so for instance, if this tile here also had this little die minion on it, I could take that and put it on my board, and that will give me additional tokens to use when battling monsters. Then, after that, the tile uh, might have an action to take. You're going to go ahead and check to see if it says anything. This one says roll the die type for each uh, die minion you control, and if you roll a one or, you, or a two, you destroy it. And then finally, if the tile has hero icons, you do the battle, right? So you would check each of these things in sequence, then you would do your little fight. And after that, you would rinse and repeat your turn, thusly increasing your power, moving, reducing your... Uh, <laughs> your time here, let's go ahead and hit the 15, moving to a new location, flipping it over, and seeing what you need to do. In this case, you're going to be fighting two, level 2 guys. That are Each hero must be defeated twice this battle, so you have to actually fight them twice. That's really good, actually. And you'll be moving and moving and moving around the board, coming across unique benefits that will give you an increase in your skills. You might have to do a check, in which case you're going to need to roll a die in order to perform the check. And finally, you'll need to get back over to the space that has the die in the dungeon marker, flip it over, and fight the epic party. In this case, that'd be a very, very challenging one, considering this is a level 1 dungeon. But I actually didn't set it up fully correctly, because I have level 3 and level 2 uh, tiles in here. And generally, you're just going to have level 1 tiles in the level 1 dungeon, but... Just for quickness's sake, I went ahead and did it that way. And remember when you flip them over to make sure that they stay accurate to how it's supposed to look. And so basically what happened there is you would go ahead and pull out the epic parties, whoever they might be, in addition to any of the extra minions, and you're going to fight them. And typically you'll have to fight the smaller dudes before you can move on to the big dudes. And that's it. If you can defeat them, you will win the game. But if your time runs out or if your health runs out, you lose the game. And then you can go on and move on to the next challenge. And as you can see, there's quite a few challenges, but there's still more to come. So I got to play a couple of them. And then they also have a unique two and potentially even three or four player game that you can play and die in the dungeon. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Each character has their own unique deck as well as their own unique abilities that when you spend your ability power, you can do unique things such as defensive maneuvers. Each of your stat die gain plus three defensive purposes this combat. These points cannot be used or modify your roll to modify your roll. So that's actually good defense for all your stats when fighting something very scary. And you have to utilize these as best as you can. And remember, though, what's also interesting is these guys here, as you place more of them down and there's more in a party, they will actually gain benefits from each other as well as additional attacks and whatnot, which I kind of explained. But it can get pretty crazy, pretty hairy. Regardless, though, that's basically how you play the game. Move on from one to the next to the next, beating the epic parties as best as you can and trying not to die in the dungeon. So let's discuss dying in the dungeon, because it's very likely you can die in dungeon one if you're not careful. Because there's this interesting balance of going ahead and moving 
and utilizing time, as well as spending that time to heal or taking damage and choosing to reduce your stats or choosing to reduce your health. Now, you don't want to get your health to zero because if that happens, you're out and some of the tiles can be traps and thusly reduce your health to zero even if you don't want it to. Whereas battles, you have to choose between reducing your might if you're using that or you reduce your agility or magic. And if you get those too low, you'll be rolling different die. If you start out with 10 in a certain stat, you're rolling a 10 set of die. But if you go down to nine, you're going to roll a different die. Die. You're not going to knock along no longer. Oh, sorry, uh, eight. You'll be rolling a different die. So you always have to remember that depending on the stat you have, that is the highest number that you could potentially roll, except for a couple unique examples like nine, for instance. But regardless, as you go lower to eight and then to six, you'll be and even to four, you'll be rolling different die and lastly have a less opportunity to do damage to monsters, making them damage you quicker and making you spend more time to then heal yourself. So it's this balancing act you're going back and forth with. You're moving from tile to tile and it's basically a solo player game. Now, uh, we can discuss this really quickly. This game can play up to two players and potentially even three. But from as I've played so far, the two and three player variant is kind of wonky and I, it's, I don't either it's not ready or I'm missing some die or something like that but I this is mainly a solo player game in my opinion and if you go into it thinking this is going to be this big multiplayer experience it's not really I think it's going to really be a type of game for players who want to create this map and go through this challenging solitaire style game involving luck and luck mitigation utilizing die trying to defeat monsters as best as you possibly can while also making sure you utilize your cards and abilities to your best possible degree because it makes the biggest difference now there is the two-player mode which is definitely more re realistically better than the three-player mode i think where i actually tried the dungeon and it's not really finished so i don't know how fair it is for me to critique it too much but we had three players at the time we tried it out because i have extra die and speaking about extra die you can use your own die in this game which is super cool so we did i have a bunch of my fancy die so i put them all out and we use those as long as you can see them they are legibly easy to see on the board you can utilize them for your stats and for your rolls and to change your up your upgrade Speaking about upgrades, the game allows you to upgrade your die to a certain extent. You can have two 20s on your board, two 6s, two 8s, two 10s, two 12s. You can't have more than two of any the, uh, the die on your board here. And you're always going to have a 20 and a 4 on either your uh, skills or on your time depending on which one you're talking about. So for time, it's 20 and skills, it's four. But you're moving around the board. The artwork is great. This game feels good. It feels like an app game. This game should be an app. In fact, I think it might be an app. It's definitely at least on Tabletopia that you can play as kind of like an app. And it does work like one. And then the question to me comes with, do I want to play this game on the app or do I want to play this game as a solo mode board game? For me, I'm not a huge solo player, but I do enjoy solo player games. And this one is a lot of fun. I think I'd probably prefer to play this one on an app because there is going to be that finicky aspect of having to make the dungeon each time, going from one dungeon to the next. However, there are some benefits with that as well because you can make your own customizable dungeons and challenge your friends and give them their own unique stats and boards to deal with to try not to die in the dungeon themselves, which I think provides a lot more variety and customization when it comes to playing these solo player board games, which is kind of cool being able to make your own unique dungeon in here. But I think with an Platform, it'll take away a little bit of the fiddly aspects of having to choose to roll for the enemies and also having to choose to set up these specific scenarios and make sure you don't see everything and put down. But if you don't mind that aspect to this game, you're going to enjoy this. You're going to feel like there's a challenge each and every time you play the dungeon, attempting to master the challenges and promote mitigation as best as you possibly can throughout the game. If you're a solo player guy, if you like chance based games with a lot of mitigation and you like a campaign style mode with a ton of customization, I strongly encourage you to take a look at Die in the Dungeon. It's also a really fun name to say, right? Okay, down below in the description. A little thing I still want to talk about that I almost forgot, these little acrylic standees here. These things are great. They look great, they feel great. They're very vibrant and pretty. And I like putting them on board and moving them as well, but I almost forgot to mention that. This game is gonna have high quality production. Okay, anyway, thank you guys for watching Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Reviews. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos. You need to like, subscribe, and comment, push that little bell notification button. It helps us, makes us know that you guys like what we're doing so we can create more content for you guys to see the different types of reviews. Also, don't forget to check out our Callie's Corner videos. One will be this week, one was previous weeks. You get to learn about rule book making and all kinds of unique, interesting aspects of the board game industry you may or may not know about. And maybe 
some tips and tricks tricks if you want to make your own game or learn about how the process goes and don't forget our live streams every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst join the community then you get to go ahead and participate trying to win games which is a lot of fun you can watch us on twitch or on facebook now we stream simulcast so it's a lot of fun i think you guys should join up which is speaking of that patreon if you'd like that's a way to support us making us do more live streams give away more games and mainly 100 percent of it if not technically even more than 100 percent of it goes to shipping games out to people just like you so it helps us out regardless thank you guys for watching so much and if you're interested definitely check out dying in the dungeon because i definitely did and i still had a good time <laughs>